How's it going everyone? Before we get to the video, I'd really appreciate it if you took the time to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And turn on notifications to get notified right away when I drop a video. YouTube likely won't even recommend my videos for you unless you have notifications on for my channel, so turn on notifications to get notified right away when I drop a video. Thank you. But anyway, today we're going to go over recent Laker news that has come out which includes Rajon Rondo returning to the bubble to join the team in hopes of playing again in the playoffs, previewing the first round matchup of the Lakers versus the Trailblazers, and the team planning to wear the Kobe Bryant inspired Mamba jerseys to honor Kobe if they make it past the first round of the playoffs. With that, we'll begin by talking about Rajon Rondo returning to the bubble to join the team, when it seems like he'll be returning to the court, and what his return can do for the team. And being that Rondo is already returning to the bubble before the first round of the playoffs even begin, it is a good sign that he is on track to rejoin the team by the second round, maybe even a little bit before if the first round goes beyond four games. Rondo was very up and down during the regular year before the NBA got shut down. We didn't get an opportunity to see what he looked like in any of the scrimmage or final eight games due to him getting injured, and I'm curious to see what he'll look like after all these months off, along with now having to recover from another hand injury. Rondo hasn't ever been the greatest shooter, and I'm hoping all the time off and recovery won't cause him to struggle when he comes back. Because although it got a little better in the final two games, the Lakers were shooting horrible from three before the playoffs. They really don't need to add in another guy to struggle as teams were practically daring them to shoot threes. Although on a more positive note, I don't think playoff Rondo is entirely a myth, I do think he'll be playing very hard when he comes back. Hopefully, a rejuvenated playoff Rondo will help the bench have a better point guard running the offense and hopefully he will also be defending at a higher level as well. I mentioned this in one of my prior videos, but Rondo is one of the few players in NBA history where literally like all of his career average numbers are elevated in the playoffs. He scores better, he rebounds better, he passes the ball even better, he defends better, and although his shooting numbers go down a little bit, that is because he takes more shots in the playoffs, and because he was the worst shooter earlier in his career, and that was when he was in the playoffs most. But even looking at his advanced stats, his offensive and defensive box plus minus ratings go up, which is crazy because the playoffs are even harder competition. Overall, I do think Rondo has the potential to benefit the Laker bench a lot in the playoffs due to all of his experience. The bench hasn't gotten any better since he got injured, so I think it is time to quit blaming him for it. Although I do think Kuzma is not a good fit coming off the bench with Rondo. I like Kuzma a lot more in the starting lineup and although it might not work all the time depending on the team they are playing, I wouldn't mind seeing them flip flop Kuzma and Caldwell Pope. When Rondo is on the floor at the same time as Kuzma, it doesn't give Kuzma a lot of room to operate due to the defense not respecting Rondo's ability to shoot. They collapse onto Kuzma, and Kuzma often will end up taking a tough shot rather than kicking it back out. Caldwell Pope is a better fit in the lineup with Rondo, although I really doubt they will flip flop the two even though I think it might help a little bit. Overall though, Rondo has been cleared to play and it probably won't be a long time before he comes back. I do think he has the benefit to help the team out, and especially the bench unit. Anyway, moving on to the preview of the Trailblazers and Lakers first round matchup. The Blazers were definitely not the team that the Lakers wanted to play between all the teams fighting for that final 8th playoff seed, but it doesn't matter now as they will be matched up against a red hot Blazers team who has most of their team healthy now. And as Damian Lillard has said, they had to work very hard to get in and that is for sure. But I think a lot of people aren't looking into that enough. They definitely did have to work very hard, and they proved they were the team that deserved the 8th seed. But did they work too hard? Damian Lillard looked a little fatigued in their final game against the Grizzlies, and even though McCollum led them to a win in that game, he has a fracture in his back which you'd think might hinder him a bit going forward. Along with that, Zach Collins has already been ruled out for Game 1 on Tuesday, and they don't have a ton of depth at the forward. They will presumably move Carmelo Anthony back to the power forward position, and then play Wenyan Gabriel a little more off the bench. And although Melo has been playing very good lately as well, he has been regularly playing over 35 minutes a night and he is now 36 years old. I think this gives the Lakers a bit of an advantage going forward if people are expecting this to be a long series. I personally don't think the Blazers are rested well enough to beat a number one seed like the Lakers, even if they have been playing at their best. A lot of people will point out how bad the Laker team has been playing, and although I agree, they also weren't playing their key players regular minutes as they had nothing left to play for. The team was trying different lineups to see what might work for different matchups and different teams, and although that affected them winning at the time, I don't think it will now that they have something to play for again. The team will definitely miss Avery Bradley going up against Lillard and McCollum, but the same could be said with the Blazers not having a player to defend LeBron. Portland regularly plays Gary Trent at small forward and Carmelo Anthony at power forward, and no one will argue that either of them could guard LeBron James. 
The Blazers have been already regularly giving up 130 points a night or more and having to beat teams by purely outscoring them. There is no denying that Damian Lillard has been incredible scoring the ball lately, but when you literally have to drop over 50 points a night in some games to barely win, that isn't usually a good thing. I think both teams are bad matchups for each other to be completely honest, but I think the Lakers have more depth and are better rested as well. I think nearly every game will be a close battle, but if I'm making a prediction, I think the series will go 5 or 6 games at most with the Lakers winning. But let me know your predictions by commenting either Lakers or Blazers and how many games the series will go to and we can talk about it there. Now finally, we'll go over the team announcing that they plan to wear the Black Mamba Kobe jerseys if they make it to the second round of the playoffs to honor Kobe Bryant. This is a really nice touch and great idea in my opinion, not to mention that these jerseys are a fan favorite as well. And I think it's a nice little nod to Kobe by saying that they will only wear them as long as they make it to the second round of the playoffs, as Kobe wouldn't want them wearing a jersey to honor him if they are getting beat in the first round. In fact, I wouldn't doubt if he'd say something like they should only get to wear them if they make it to the finals. Mamba mentality, you know? Okay, I'm just messing around now, but either way I think it is overall a great idea for the team honoring him and his family in that way. I'll be looking forward to it. But I think that'll do it for this video. Let me know what you guys think about Rondo coming back, how the team will do in Game 1 against Portland, and if you're excited for the Kobe jerseys if the team makes it to the second round. Comment down below what you think of all of it, and if you enjoyed the video, remember to drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, thank you for watching.